Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I apologise for the viewing angle and also probably the fact that you cannot hear me. Let me do my window up. Welcome to the fourth instalment. God, I can't get my words out. The fourth instalment of James's morning drive. I've tried my best to be in a different car every time, but you know I don't own seven cars, so. <laughs> Um, so I've got my road stage, you can tell. I hope you watched my previous video. It's oh, it's a, it's an absolute dream. Like I'm doing, I'm not even doing 20 yet. It just, just, it just feels and sounds. It's, it's visceral. It's, it's oh, I just, I'm just so over, I'm over the moon with it, honestly. And I do apologise for the audio and potential of just very, very shaky footage, but um, I don't care. As in, like. <clears throat> But like this is this is the car I think I've always needed for a long, long time. It's agile. It's small. It's cheap to run. Um, it's. It, I smile every time I look at it. I smile every time I get in it. And I drive it. I want to share it with everyone as well. Like there's so many people in my life that I'd love to take for a spin in it. And you know, if anybody, if any of my fans, you know, are like are ever at a car meet and you want to have a go in one of these, just let me know. Cause this, it, it, it is fantastic, it is honestly, I'm not even like saying it to compensate or anything, this is, this is wonderful. But yeah, let's, um, let's update you about everything since the last time I did my morning drive. So the last time I did my morning drive, I still had my Golf and I was going through the motorway. Now I was, I was singing their praises for ages and you know, and saying like, oh it's a fantastic company. The company itself is okay, it's the dealerships that need to, you know, uh, improve their customer service because I had a dealership turn up at my house nine o'clock in the evening, okay, so pretty much out of hours. I worked, they said like, oh yeah, this is the only time we can do. I was like, well, that's ridiculously late, but anyway. They turn up, they, a pair of them are recording everything, every single possible thing. Um, they find an oil leak in the sump, which is obviously, you know, I mean, <clears throat> any dealership would be like, oh, that's, that's, that's not good. Um, and then the price that I was promised, which was £4,200, which again, I'd be over the fucking moon if I got it, but you know, wishful thinking and all that jazz. Um, I ended up only, well, he, they ended up offering me only eighteen to £2,000 for it because he needed a cam chain doing. And they said, they, they literally said in front of me, like, oh, it's going to be like a £500, £600 job. I was like, mate, I was like, I don't know any mechanics. If I went to, if I went somewhere and asked for the cam chain to be done, they'd, I'd easily be charged fifteen hundred to two grand. Okay, this is just because of the area that I live in. Um, maybe if I went to a specialist, they might have got got it a little bit cheaper. But I'm looking at a, easily a grand. And the fact that they tried to take two grand off the asking price, okay, and then be like, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. It's like you, you can get that fixed very, very easily, extremely easily, and still you try and lowball me, but. I said no, and they tried to guilt trip me. They said, oh, I've come all the way from London. Oh, bloody blah, 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 it's been a long day. Oh, I've had to go see 10 cars. But when I when I spoke to Jeff at J&M &J Motors, obviously, they're going to see 10 to 12 cars a day. They're, they're laughing if they manage to get one sale, because for instance, I was quoted 4,200. The reserve was 3,700. They were nowhere near the reserve. Okay, they were asking like two grand, and even then I, I said no, 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 multiple times, and I managed to get 2,300 out of them. And they're hoping for people to say, excuse my friends, they're hoping for people to say, oh, fuck it, yeah, just have it. And then they're laughing because they've, they've made a grand on each on that car, and that's that's a good day, that's a good day's work. And to be honest, to get the, the dealership that I was dealing with, um, I, looked at their, I looked at their website, they don't specialize in anything, they literally, they pick up cars cheap, fix them cheap, stick a warranty on them for six months, and then forget about them. So I knew fully well, not, not only would the Golf be treated like crap, but the next person that would get it would have to deal with multiple issues. So in the end, I had to go to We Buy Any Car, which then they quoted me 3,400 before looking at the damage and shit. And um, <clears throat> in the end, I managed to sell it to them for 2,900. Now again, I paid five and a half grand for it when the second hand car market went crazy. So I'm out of pocket anyway. Like no matter, no matter what happened, even if I sold it for four grand, I'm out of pocket. But considering that it needed a cam chain doing, the air con was probably gone. There's multiple problems they had and they were starting to show, like, rear their ugly head. So 
in, in, in any case, you know, I'm, I'm still quids in considering the, the situation that the car was in. And um, obviously it was just setback after setback because I was hoping to pick this roaster up like two weeks earlier. But every single week I had to call up Jeff and be like, look, I quite literally don't have the funds. Nobody wants to buy this golf for like a reasonable price. And he did his best. He helped me out. He like, he contacted a few dealerships, but they were all in the same situation. Like, look, I'm not going to make profit on this car because there's like two grand's worth of work that needs to be doing into it. And I understand that. So that's when Jeff suggested like, just go we buy any car and cut your losses. And I did. So I went to we buy any car. Um, I lied through my gills. Like there was no warning lights. The only warning light that was on my gauge was the, the tire pressure thing, which, um, I discovered that the Mark 6 Golf, or is it a 5? I think it's the Mark 6 that I had. <clears throat> the Mark 6 Golf has a button inside the glove box or in the um, infotainment system to reset the tyre pressure. But that was 2012 models and onwards, and mine was a 2011. So I was looking for this button that didn't exist at the time. And um, yeah, the only way to fix it is to quite literally get, a, I don't know, an OBD reader or some kind of like Golf certified computer to reset it. So even then, that was a pain in the ass. But no, I ended up getting 2,900 for it, which was which was good considering people were quoting me like under two grand. So that gave me a bit more cash to then, you know, obviously pay off the Roadster, which was also five and a half. I mean, oh, hindsight is a wonderful thing because if eight months ago I was like, I'm going to get a Roadster, I would have had eight months of extremely cheap and fun driving, like already under my belt. But you know, you live and you learn, and I'm now. Again, I'm I'm not in I'm not in the red financially, but obviously this the setback of losing almost a grand, well over a grand from the golf has put me back a bit. So I've got to be back on my grind, you know. That's why I'm I'm streaming on Twitch all the time. I'm trying to make YouTube content that's interesting, um, and obviously I'm 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 a post, I'm postman Pat as well. So I've got to get my hours in and you know just just make money whatever way I can. I've got my Pokemon collection that I'd like to maybe make a video about. And also my Hot Wheels collection as well, uh, to see if that would track any interest from people. But um, yeah, and I, I think apart from that, everything else is is on, you know, everything is ticking over, tickety boo. Uh, I'm actually going to Scotland tomorrow with my girlfriend to see her family, um, which is going to be really fun. So there's going to be plenty of photos and videos. I might even try and make a little vlog um, because I'm, ex I'm not only am I excited to go to Scotland, I'm excited for the drive. I'm excited for you know like. Being, being in Scotland for the first time, I've never been, and there's a famous 500 mile road, which I won't do this time, but in the roadster would just be an absolute dream. Um, I'm planning to track this at some point as well, and, um, and there's, a couple of, there's a couple of ideas in the works. There's actually, um, there's a new YouTube channel that potentially is, is gonna be in the works as well, like um, me, Max, Adam, and Bill. Um, we're just sort of in, like, at the moment just like discussing ideas of like things to do and stuff and um yeah it's all exciting times i think right now we're, uh, i know i am i think a couple of couple of us are in a financial hole at the moment so because of christmas and well as as you all know when i started my channel i had a serious chest infection my voice was just gone and i actually had to take work off for three weeks and because i'm agency i didn't get any holiday or sick pay so you know that really that those three weeks really really did set me back and um I'm just paying the consequences now, but I'm not. I'm not letting it get me down. I'm not letting it uh, defeat me because that's just life, you know. I've got so many things that I can be. Um, I can be so happy and proud of, and also like have gratitude for. Like, luckily at the moment, I'm still living at home, so the rent is reasonable in comparison to like moving out, um, which is allowing me to get my financial things in order. And once they're in order, um, it's oh, it's it's game on. Life will get life will get even better. Life is good for me right now, but life will get even better. Oh god, this car sounds so good. Wait till I take it to the, the Mile Road, that famous strip. It is just. I mean, obviously it's quite. It, it's wet and icy outside, so it's not the right conditions to really go. Um, let's say ten out of ten. You can definitely go like five or six out of ten and just have the best time of your life. As well, it's quite hard to, um, well, it's not impossible, but it's quite hard to, to get the, the rear wheels, like, you know, oversteer, let's say. Um, to oversteer this car, you've got to be driving like a lunatic. So, if you, like, there's, there's sharp bends and corners. If you just take your foot off the accelerator, it will just go around. It is just, it, it sticks to the road. Obviously, the, 
the way the wheels are, they're extremely wide in comparison to you know the Smart 4.2 and the Smart 4.4. Um, and to be honest, I'm starting to. Oh, my, my girlfriend's going to hate this, but I'm starting to like the original Smart 4.4, especially like the Brabus edition one. Like if you get yourself a nice little Smart 4.4 um, Brabus or like the, you know the, the tuned edition, I think oh wow, what a nice Triumph TR4 there, lovely. Um, just, I'm falling in love with smart, and I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening to me. Uh, I, I, can, I can finally understand why people buy smart cars. It is cheap, cheap fun. Yes, the smart 4.2s are dangerous because they I mean, they cra when they're crash tested, they do very, very well. But it's more like they are very liable to spin. Um, strong headwinds will literally. It won't, it won't top you over, it won't topple you over, but it will mess you up. Um, whereas this is really low to the ground, it's, it's actually got quite a, it's a longer chassis, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, oh look at this, glorious, glorious blue sunny day. If I was in the Audi, yes I'd be driving faster. I could probably hit 60 or 70 here, but then I'd have to brake. I'd have to brake like, to get myself around. So I'm doing 50 at the moment, very safe, checking my surroundings. I'm not touching the brakes. Easy. I mean, that was just a piece of piss. Excuse my French. Right. Let's, um, let's do the same as what I did with the Audi. Let's, let's go to a complete stop if we can. Sorry, lady behind me. Here we go. Woo! God, that feels so much faster than it actually is. I was only doing 60. <laughs> so the original 0 to 60 time in this car is 10.9 seconds. Um, this one's been remapped to the first stage. So instead of 80 brake, it's got 98. So it's sitting somewhere between, it, it's somewhere between nine and 10 seconds. Like some days I can do a low nine, some days it's like a, it's a high nine, but God does it make a difference. Again, like the camera probably makes it seem like I'm doing like 200 miles per hour. No, that's an exaggeration. But I do, I do feel like I'm going a lot faster, and I'm not breaking the speed limit. And for somebody like me who really, really enjoys driving now, like as you can tell, like I spend most of my time on the Seto Corsa, um, either doing the Goodwood Hill climb or you know some kind of form of racing, and obviously Rocket League as well. I, I absolutely love Rocket League. And a shout out to shout out to Potato Dan and AS Perry, Adam and Coram. LDN Archie because whenever we jump on Rocket League it's always a lot, a lot of fun. Archie's getting better, but I can't I can't have him in competitive games at the moment, bless him. But he is definitely getting better. And to be honest, it's not like he's he's really well Jeffster is really into his airsoft. And um, so he loves Call of Duty and that sort of those sort of games. And to be honest, when, when I when I see him play he's extremely tactical and smart with it, so and also as well, like where Rocket League is basically football with cars, in real life, Arch is very, very good at football. So, you know, if he takes those skills that from the actual game and tries to put them into Rocket League, because unfortunately Rocket League, Rocket League is all about mechanics and um, having extremely good hand-eye coordination. So being able to judge when, how the ball's gonna bounce, the aerial, when, oh, sorry, car changed too early. better and obviously I'm, I'm really hoping that me Adam and Dan can go far I mean obviously we're not really gonna get much time to play with each other but, but when we do I really think that we are sort of unstoppable like Adam Adam is it's gone in the past three months he, he has really improved in Rocket League so so much so that I do believe that like, I'm gonna do like a little 1v1 tournament with like my fans and my friends and stuff which would be quite cool um, but he has improved massively and 
the way he he rotates and, and is actually like he plays in defence is really really good. Then you've got Archie. Uh, sorry, Archie obviously is he's, he's trying his best, but he scored his first goal the other day, which I clicked on on Twitch, which is fantastic. It was a legit goal and it was a long shot as well. Like, it was quite hard to save, so good for him. Um, but Dan, on the other hand, he's all about he's pre he's pretty much like a cooksier, cooksier, something whatever his name is, cooksier. Uh, he likes to shot angled cars and he's all about precision. He wins 50-50s a lot, so great midfielder. And sometimes he, he, he manages to hit goals and, and passes that I just don't even, I can't even fathom, but I think it is because of the car he uses. And then there's me that just tries to be an all-rounder, you know, I'll, 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 I'll do everything I can, the best, best of my abilities. Because when I used to play religiously, in ranked, I used to solo queue, and, and the only way you win games is by being the only defender because everybody's ball chasing. Doesn't matter if you're in, I don't know, gold, platinum, diamond, champion, you're always going to have ball chasers because they're the ones that will unfortunately do all the, what looks like they do all the hard work, but in reality they've got no, no game sense. And that's the one thing that me and Adam have earned like, over the five, six years of playing. We have earned game sense. All right, our mechanics aren't that good. We can't do aerials or double taps or like you know just crazy trick shots. But if you're consistent with them, good. If you're not, just just stop. Just just work on other things like play defense, play midfield. Just just like I used to make it a goal where I'd only pass. Like I'd just pass. I wouldn't bother like taking every single shot that I could that I could and had. And then there was days where I'd just sit in defence, like not in goal, obviously. Like, but obviously, if you're like, if you're bronze, silver, and gold, just sit in goal. You'll you'll learn you'll learn how to judge aerials and how to hit the ball hard and stuff. But playing defensively, so I'll just boom them up from from our half of the field, and then just just see the other two. Like, if I was in three v three solo queue, the two of them would just constantly like um, double commit, and you, you know, like, and then I'd be there to pick up the pieces, but. Um, Anyway, enough about Rocket League, I could talk about it for, for weeks because it is, without a doubt, my favourite game at the moment. And um, Oh, another thing as well, I'm, I, I used to be extremely good at Guitar Hero, so I'm planning to get a Guitar Hero guitar uh, for PC and then like downloading a load of custom um, songs and stuff. And I think there's a way that the, the actual the, the chat can actually interact and get involved as well, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that because I love Guitar Hero. It's actually the reason why I started playing guitar and got in the band, you know. So it's, big, it's been a big inspiration to me. And to be honest, it was the reason I started listening to rock. Like that's that's quite monumental. Like before, I don't know, I never, I never really used to listen to music because I didn't think anything really like shouted out to me. And then my sister bought Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. And then I heard Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. I was like, well, okay. Okay, I'm get, I can get into this. And then the, the whole, the whole playlist of Guitar Hero 3 was good. Lay Down by Priests, is that, are they called Priest or Priestess or something? Oh, such a good song. That's just one example, but there's, yeah, um, The Strokes, Reptilia, oh my god. But yeah, um, that's, that's, that's in the works at the moment, and um, obviously I'm just going to enjoy my rose to enjoy Scotland, and um, I'll, uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed the video of me picking up the rose as well. Oh, so I'll get used to it potholes and speed bumps are my, my enemy now um, but yeah I hope you enjoy it and um, please uh, feel free to subscribe and share if you're interested um, if you know anybody that would be interested in, in the Roadsters progress or, or anybody that would be interested in my stream on Twitch I try to Twitch uh, I try to stream as much as I can Rocket League Call of Duty um, well Assetto Corsa uh, anything really anything if, if anybody wants to get involved as well just let me know Anyway, yeah, this is oh my god, it's almost a 20 minute video, so I've really, I've really nattered away here. Verbal diarrhea is one, and um, yeah, take care, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. If you made it this far, really uh, appreciate you and I love you all. Take care now.